Now we have looked at a case of having two voltage sources in series. We will now consider all the other elements that we know. Okay. So the next basic element we know is the current source. Okay. Now we can imagine connecting current sources like this and let us say they have values I 1 and I 2, we will immediately notice that this connection is not permitted, because Kirchhoff's current law is violated at this node. Okay. Unless I 2 happens to be exactly equal to I 1. Okay. If this is the case, then this whole thing is equivalent to a single current source of value I 1. Okay. And if I 2 is not equal to I 1, then this connection is not permitted. Okay. So, what this means is that if you have two unequal uh, current sources, you cannot connect them in series, because such a connection necessarily violates Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. So, next we will look at resistors in series. So, I will take a number of resistors just for illustration. Let me put down three of them. Okay. Now, what we want to know is what is the effective behavior between the upper and lower terminals. Okay. So, for that let me mark the voltages across each resistor and the current through each resistor and we know that the same current flows through all the resistors because of the series connection okay and so i'll call that current i so by ohm's law we know that v1 is i times r1 v2 is i times r2 and v3 is i times r3 okay and the total voltage between these two, if I call that V x from our earlier discussion, we know that it is the sum of individual voltages. So, V x is V 1 plus V 2 plus V 3, which is I times R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3. That is the relationship between the voltage across the series combination and the current through the series combination. Okay. So, one thing you notice immediately is that this is a proportionality relationship as well. The voltage is proportional to the current okay. and the proportionality constant happens to be R 1 plus R 2 plus R 3. So, that is the effective resistance of the series combination. Okay. So, what does it mean? It means that this entire combination is equivalent to between in, uh, the two ends a single resistor. Okay. If I mark the two ends, let me call them perhaps terminals N 1 and N 2. So, between N 1 and N 2, I have a single resistor whose value is given by this whole thing. Okay. So, the effective resistance of a series combination of resistors is the sum of individual resistances. Okay. Now, again this is probably a result that every one of you is familiar with. If I gave you a series combination of resistors, 
and ask you for the total resistance you would immediately come back with the sum formula but the reason i spent so much time on this is that even such elementary results you should know the reasoning behind them okay so once you get used to doing something like this that is every result that you know you have a reasoning behind them and that is that is to say you have a way to prove the result okay once you have that as the uh, as the concepts become more and more complicated you will still be able to prove all of them and uh, really get a mastery over the concepts the reason to do this is that as the problems get more and more complicated you should still be able to prove uh, every step of it and connect everything every new result to uh, something that you know some basic concept that you know from earlier and from this it's pretty obvious that if you have n resistors in series rn the whole thing simply is equivalent to a single resistor whose value is the sum of resistances okay so next we we'll look at uh, capacitors in series so let me connect two capacitors in the usual way c1 and c2 and let me mark the current i through them and i'll mark the individual voltages v1 and v2 okay i know that the voltage v1 is 1 over c1 integral of the current okay and i'll take the integral from 0 to t where this is v1 of t and i also here assumed zero initial voltage across the capacitor similarly v2 of t again assuming a zero initial voltage across the capacitor c2 is this okay with the same condition now if i look at the total voltage across the combination we know that obviously it's the sum of individual voltages that's true for all series combinations so vx which is v1 plus v2 is given by the sum of these two which you will easily see is 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 integral i dt okay now you see that the relationship between vx and i looks very similar to between v1 and i or v2 and i in other words this relationship also the relationship between vx and i also looks like some capacitor and this proportionality constant we have in front of the integral is the reciprocal of the effective capacitance okay so the nature of this relationship says that the whole thing is equivalent to some capacitor c effective and the proportionality constant tells you how much that is this constant in front of it should have been 1 over c effective okay and that is equal to 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 okay so this gives you the value of the effective capacitance now you can extend this to more than two capacitors so if you have n capacitors in series the reciprocal of the effective capacitance will be the sum of reciprocals of individual capacitances 
individual capacitances okay next we will look at uh, inductors in series let me start with two inductors l1 and l2 and mark the individual voltages v1 and v2 and the current through the series combination which is i we know that v1 is l1 times the time derivative of i and v2 is l2 times the time derivative of i and this total voltage vx is v1 plus v2 which if you sum these two you will see that it is l1 plus l2 times the time derivative of i okay so again the relationship between this vx and the current i looks exactly similar to that of a single inductor the only different thing is the proportionality constant in front of the time derivative of the current okay so clearly from the nature of this relationship we deduce that the series combination is equivalent to an inductor and the value of the inductor let me label it l effective is given by the sum of individual inductors okay and i won't draw a separate picture for this you have seen this uh, couple of times before if i have n inductors in series the combination is equivalent to a single inductor whose value is l1 plus l2 plus ln okay this is for n inductors in series okay now these are all elementary results what i want to emphasize is that we start from the basics that is uh, kcl or kvl here in case of series combination kirchhoff's current law tells us that the same current flows through all the elements kirchhoff's voltage law tells us that the voltage across the ends of the combination equals the sum of individual voltages then we combine these consequences from kirchhoff's current law and kirchhoff's voltage law with the iv relationship for each element and uh, deduce the nature of the series combination okay so in all the cases we have seen so far we have of course taken series combination of identical elements the series combination also looks like the same element and the value is modified in some way okay 